Remember, well, no, I don't think so. Yeah, I remember the council on foreign relations. You had a conspiracy. You, well, you've certainly. Well, it, let me just tell you what Newsweek says that says this: the John Birch Society considers communism only one arm of a national of a master conspiracy in which socialist American insiders are plotting to establish world government. Now, it also says, and here's Director John McManus, that's your public relations director, saying that former Secretary of State Alexander Haig and CIA Director William Casey are two of these master conspirators who are plotting to establish world government. Now, what do you say? You know, that kind of silly, asinine statement is what makes, pe makes people laugh at the John Birch Society. Well, Tom, I'm sure being a long-standing member of the Rockefeller apparatus uh, and as a member of the Council on Foreign Relations of long-standing, you're fully aware that you, there is an elitist core in this country that has seen value in subsidizing communism, of protecting communism. It has? Sure. You're accusing me of subsidizing communism? No, no, I'm saying because that there is... Because I happen to belong no, to a... No, to there a is an elite core. Now, study that, group? No, no, wait a minute. There is an elite core in this country that has dominated American society. Well, I'm not one of well, them. Trilateral Commission. The Trilateral the Commission, Council on Foreign, Council on Foreign Relations. State here's Department, I suppose. Well, let's face it, they've dominated the State Department for 40 years, mm -hmm. and uh, pretty much openly All so. Right, but what are they trying to do? Well, their about? objective is to try to bring about a gradual transition in our society, a dissolving of sovereignty, and a moving steadily to the left on the political spectrum. Well, who are the they? Belief the elitist groups that I mentioned, particularly key individuals and policymakers in the Council on Foreign Relations. Is the International Monetary Fund part of this? Well, I would say the International Monetary Fund has certainly been set up for the purpose of facilitating that transfer of sovereignty and transfer of wealth on the road. Right, we elected something. Mr. Conservative. Let me just finish the point, right. because otherwise we're going to have a lot of un unanswered questions, that you are looking at a group that has worked to bring about the dissolution of national sovereignties on the road to world government. And certainly, uh, you're familiar with uh, local professor Carol Quigley, who has been part of your club, in which he admitted all this. And he said in his book, Tragedy and Hope, the only thing I disagree is that we've worked to keep it a secret. And you see Arthur Schlesinger, Jr., writing way back in 1947, says, yes, this is the hidden policy of America. But we can't tell the American public because they're too unsophisticated to see the who, value. What, what is the instrumentality of world government? What is the instrumentality of which to say about Arthur? That's the silliest statement I ever heard. He well, never made anything like well, that. Well, let me suggest that you read the May-June issue of the Partisan Review of 1947, Tom, and you can read it for yourself. It's called Arthur Schlesinger said Manifesto. there was a conspiracy, oh. a conspiracy oh, to oh, promote communism. Oh, no, he didn't use the word conspiracy. I he said the objective was to bring about. Well, let me finish. I'll tell you. He said that the objective, the secret policy, which we can't tell the American public because they're not sophisticated enough to see the value, is that through a steady result of erosion of new deals, we bring the American society steadily to the left, right, and through a sound concept of benign containment, we merge into the vital center of the socialist left. Those are his words, not mine. You right, think John Kennedy was a member of that conspiracy? No, no, let me ask you this. The uh, world federalist movement in the post-war era contained a lot of people who eventually broke with it, and a lot of people thought the UN in the post-war era looked toward world government. Sure. Indeed they did, up until 48, 49. But a lot of them said, look, we were utopian. That's over and done with. We can't move. And a lot of them came in Kennedy's government. Uh, Schlesinger was in there when they were fighting uh, in Vietnam, launched the effort in Vietnam. Schlesinger was behind the Bay of Pigs. In other words, look, isn't there some move that occurred in the post-war era that now has been dissipated because nobody believes in the utopian ideal of world government anymore? Well, I think there are those that realize that moving straight from a prototype of the United Nations into world government perhaps is tactically impossible. But phasing out uh, increasingly national sovereignty into regional government uh, and phasing out sovereignties into international treaties in multiple areas the whole could be around. The whole movement toward, quote, interdependence. Yeah. NATO is, uh, so, uh, is part of the conspiracy? Well, there are certainly elements in NATO. There are people in, uh, in NATO who are very strongly dedicated to the defense of the West. Uh, but at the same time, you find in NATO a steady dissolution. You find a growing weakness as a uh, NATO policy uh, dominated by State Department policies that uh, has not worked. Well, it's uh, a regional grouping, and I think, therefore, it may be suspect by the John Birch Society. We're talking with Congressman Larry McDonnell, who has recently been elevated, I guess, to chairmanship of the John Birch Society, succeeding uh, Robert Welsh. We'll be back in a minute.